What's good gamers? Bra weep grana weep ninny bong YouTube. Red, white, and blue streak here with another edition of Prime Month. Today we're taking a look at Transformers War for Cybertron Optimus Prime. Not to be confused with that War for Cybertron Optimus Prime or that War for Cybertron Optimus Prime or even... Wait. Sorry, that deja vu was way too strong. <laughs> Anyways, today we're taking a look at the Transformers Studio Series Gamer Edition War for Cybertron Optimus Prime. Now, originally I didn't think I'd have this thing in time for Prime Month, and technically I don't because this video is not going to be up before the end of Prime Month, I don't think. Uh, but I did get this thing a little bit before Prime Month, so I mean, you know, I kind of did have it in. I mean, it comes out in June on TF Source, and by the time I have this video out, it'll probably be June. Anyways, look, I found it at my local GameStop, picked it up off the shelf, brought it home, and well, here we are. And uh, <laughs> yeah, this thing's pretty good. Starting with the packaging as always, Prime comes in the typical plastic-free packaging Hasbro uses nowadays, which looks nice. I definitely had a personal concern that one of his accessories might be missing since you can easily access it through the window here. Besides that, it looks great. The silver brush steel effect that replaces the typical Studio Series blue here is a nice touch that, considering where I found this, made me think of things like old Game Informers or G4 from back in the day. It's also worth noting that the color is also used with the background this toy comes with, which is a nice touch. And of course, speaking of contents, we remove Prime from the packaging and a few twist ties later, and here we are! I gotta say, after recently booting up the games again, I like the proportions of this new figure quite a bit better than the old one. Everyone in the High Moon games always looked so swole and angular, with a nice bit of curvature on like the arms, or some parts like that. Which the original toys did a good job adapting, but this newer version of the figure does that even better. I will say, I kinda wish the chest protruded just a little bit more, but this is fine too. It's just, War for Cybertron Optimus always struck me as more of a D-cup kind of vibe. Besides that, the figure is sculpted amazingly in a much nicer feeling plastic than his 2010 predecessor. The molded detail on this thing definitely gives the OG a run for his money, though they definitely could have done a bit more on the painting side of things for the new figure. The black chest windows and the red highlights on the original figure are sorely missed on the Studio Series, so I definitely plan to customize the second one I'm getting from TF Source. As for the third one I ended up pre-ordering, I don't know, Nemesis Prime or maybe a giveaway, I don't know, I'll decide when the figures get here. But despite my little nitpicks here and there, I definitely think he looks closer to the game model. Even the face sculpt looks a lot better. Not to say that the old one was bad by any means, it's just that the new one just does that much better of a job, and the blue eyes are definitely a nice step in the right direction. It makes him feel, um, what's the word, alive? Kind of back on the side of nitpicks, I kind of wish that they would have used the same or a similar glossy finish that the old figure had, but it's not the end of the world, it's not a big deal. And this is probably the one instance I'll ever say anything like this, unless you count each War for Cybertron figure I review as a separate instance, but this is the one time where I kind of wish that the weathering from the Siege toy line carried over to this figure. I mean, that kind of weathering would have been more than appropriate on the War for Cybertron line, it, or this War for Cybertron line, I should say. And it certainly would have looked good on the otherwise bland gun that he comes with. The weapon looks good, don't get me wrong. It's an entirely accurate Ion Blaster from the game, and I get why he came with it, since the Ion Blaster is Optimus Prime's signature weapon in most continuities. Though I'm not gonna lie, I kinda wish that we would've gotten the Neutron Assault Rifle from the cover of the game. But I think we're getting that with Barricade, so at the very least I can snag that from that toy and use that for the display, but, you know, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. I also kinda wish that they would've given us a more game-accurate paint job for the gun. I mean, they've gone through the trouble of giving us the game-accurate weapons and allowing us to swap out the forearms for the weapons like they do in the game. I think with the Studio Series line claiming to be entirely screen accurate, the paint job isn't too much to ask. <sighs> Just more things to do with the custom. It's also worth noting that when you swap out the forearm, there is a place for you to store the forearm on the back of the figure, which is a great idea in concept, it's just that... Well... Yeah, it doesn't really look the best from 
any angles really. Another weapon that could use a bit more of a paint job is definitely the axe. It's really cool they decided to give us an Argon Axe in the first place. It's a weapon that Prime uses pretty often in the game, especially in the Kaon level. But the lack of paint leaves a bit to be desired. I mean, this is one of the few times I'd actually want Hasbro to use the transparent plastic they seem to love overusing on their other figures. That being said, the lack of paint isn't the end of the world and it's far from a deal breaker. He looks great with it and there's even a way to transform the blade which is a fantastic touch. Speaking of the touch, Prime comes with an addition that I honestly never expected on a Studio Series figure. The Matrix of Leadership. Definitely a bit smaller than what we see in game, but it's still painted really well on the front. Yeah, it attaches by a peg to the Matrix Chamber which is fantastically sculpted. And he can't hold it or anything, unfortunately, but it's still a nice thing to have, and I'm glad that it wasn't stolen or anything, because like I said earlier, it's kind of easy access for this thing through the package window. So yeah, the figure looks really good with his accessories, which are a fantastic upgrade from the one not game accurate accessory we got with the original. And another thing that they upgraded with this new figure is the articulation. There's a ball joint at the head that allows you to get the full range of motion. and allows you to get up that far and down about that far. The arms can rotate all the way around and can go out to about there. The arms can bend a little bit past 90 degrees to allow for full flexage. There's a pretty tight but not as limited wrist rotation. There is a waist rotation on this guy, thank goodness and the legs can kick a lot farther than the original, but unfortunately they can't kick back at all. There's a rotation at the thigh, just like the original, and a bend at the knee getting you 90 degrees. There's a fantastic pivot at the foot, but besides that it's a little more limited. Can't really go up, but they can go down, but that's more for the transformation. Articulation on this guy is just prime. It's pure bliss posing this thing. And if you add a figure stand of some kind, things get even better. Now I just need a Megatron to complete the look. Hasbro and Takara have outdone themselves here with a figure that looks amazing in robot mode. The proportions are more accurate, the colors are nearly spot on, and the poses you can get this guy into compared to the original, <coughs> which is very good, very interesting. Now what about the alt mode? Well that's also really good. Such an improvement from the original figure. The transformation is appropriately simple and somewhat game accurate, resulting in a mostly accurate alt mode. Yeah, we should probably talk about this. So yeah, the back of the alt mode is definitely a little bit of an eyesore with the hands poking out. It's kind of odd that they weren't able to figure out a way to get a panel to come out from the back of the leg or just add something to cover up the hole or at the very least have the hands transform a little bit, you know, pulled away so that it's not as distracting. But all in all, I can't say I'm too mad at it. I mean, one, I'm hardly going to be looking at this mode from the back. And two, I'm sure DNA Designs or some other company or someone on Etsy will come out with some sort of kit or 3D print or something to cover up the little hole in the back and, you know, really just solidify this vehicle mode. And besides, overall, it's a better looking vehicle mode than- <laughs> Stop doing that! 
Look, back on the subject of the upgrade kits, I'm sure some of you will say that it's unacceptable for a figure to require an upgrade kit. And I'm not saying that this figure requires an upgrade kit at all. I can just simply not look at the back of the vehicle mode, and I'm not going to be noticing the hands from any other angle besides that. And two, for the price of the figure, an upgrade kit really isn't that bad. Now, if it's a masterpiece figure that requires an upgrade kit, that's a whole nother story. More on that sometime in the future when I get around to reviewing that figure. Prime looks great disguised as a Cybertruck, and a lot of the little details are carried over by the old figure, and by extension, the game, with some nice additions to further increase the accuracy of this figure. Tesla Prime rolls astoundingly well, and looks great doing it, from most angles anyways. So yeah, along with the back, the vehicle mode also looks a little weird from the front, they try to do this fake chest thing with the part of the alt mode that would have worked better if they just covered the entire front of the vehicle mode in my opinion, since the front window designs don't even fully match up. See, even Hasbro at least somewhat agrees that Prime's got a little more junk in the front. Besides that, there are a few hollow bits when you look at the mode top down, but they aren't too bad to be honest, and I mean, how often are you going to be looking at this guy top down? Still, it's worth mentioning. Also, no visible head syndrome on this guy, so that's nice. And the weapons can go away for storage on the vehicle, and this is perhaps the one place I'll personally give the original a leg up on the new kit on the block. There, the gun, while non-canonical, felt a bit better integrated with the alt mode. Here, it's just slapping the weapons on top of the vehicle mode and calling it a day, which seems to be an unfortunate trend with Transformers figures. Except you, baby girl, you're perfect. So instead, I just opt to toss the accessories in the accessories box while he's not in robot mode, and bring them back as I discuss this figure as a complete package. Overall, this is an improvement over the 2010 figure and gets a full recommendation from me. The paint job and colors of plastic used here are pretty good, almost spot on, and overall look almost entirely game accurate, certainly living up to the Studio Series name. The proportions in robot mode look a lot better than the original, and the toy looks a lot cleaner overall. The materials used here are a lot nicer, and really encourage you to handle this guy. While mentioning that, the articulation is a huge step up, as well as the accessories. The transformation is also a huge step up. The instructions are almost not even necessary, though they are easy to follow, which in this figure's case, I think is a very good thing. And the alt mode is, overall, a lot more game accurate than its predecessor, though it does fall short in some categories, but nothing too bad. Overall, considering that I consider this an improvement of the 2010 figure, I would be willing to give this a 4 out of 5. Though, considering the little drawbacks here and there, I can't exactly ignore those. So I am going to just give this thing a 3.5 out of 5 like its predecessor. If you can find this guy, get him while you can. Lord knows that the Studio Series aftermarket pricing is just... Ugh. And I anticipate that it's going to be the same for Prime here, considering that this figure is actually really good. And honestly, all things considered, I think this is the best Studio Series Prime on the market, and probably will be the best one that we have for a while. Oh! Huh. Guys, I think this might be my first 5 out of 5.